We got John in Melbourne, Florida. Hey guys, how hey. you doing? Hey. Pretty good. Hey, I just want to first say uh, I appreciate you guys having a show like this uh, where people can call in. Thanks. It got really yeah. hot in here. Well, I'm hearing a lot of static. Is that, is that me or? You sound fine. You sound fine. Go ahead. Okay, I think I'm hearing myself on your show being broadcast. That's what it is. Okay. Um, I, I, let me just try to ignore it. It kind of throws me off a little bit. Um, uh, I got a couple things really quick before I get into my question. Um, what you were just telling the previous caller about the claim thing, um, as in guilty or not guilty, you claim we don't call ourselves the not guiltiest. But I think in statement, you're correct, but in what you actually do, indeed, you're, you're totally uh, uh, contradicting yourself. You have a show called The Atheist Experience. You, I mean, to go ahead and put a show on the air like that, you are making some type of claim. Yes, I'm and claiming that I don't accept theistic claims. Okay, and then, uh, that's not my main uh, reason for calling anyway. And another thing, I think what the previous caller was trying to narrow down was either intelligence called the universe or not. And if you say intelligence did not cause the universe, I'm not, re not specifically referring to God, I'm saying intelligence. By default, you're saying the non-intelligence caused the universe or no intelligence at all. Because there's neither a thing that is not intelligent or intelligent. It's either one or the other. So in that way, whether you open your mouth about it, you are by default in that position. Let me, let me, let me see if I can phrase it this way. I agree. Either the universe is the result of intelligent causes or it's not. Those are the only two possibilities. And my position is that I am unconvinced that intelligent re causes are responsible for the universe. Okay. Now, I'll go a step further and say that all of the available evidence points to unintelligent causes for the universe. That is my assessment of it, but it's a different issue from whether or not I accept right. the bald, unfounded assertion that intelligence is necessary and responsible. That's not fair enough. Um, my question is, um, do you believe that God is improbable? Go ahead, because that's what I was going to ask. Which God? The Judeo-Christian God. The God with, the, with the characteristics of that God, eternal, um, maximally great being, um, intelligent, all-powerful. If he's both all-powerful and... Um and all-knowing, and if he endowed people with free will, then at some levels he's contradicting. Is so, that what makes him improbable, though? Well, that would almost make him impossible. I mean, it, I, there, there, if you define a god that in such a way that it is logically self-contradictory, then I'd say that that god is impossible. Um, and I think that some definitions for the Christian god definitely do that. Um, they're they're kind of naive. They're not used. What a lot of apologists have done is said when they deal with God's, the Christian God's supposed omniscience or omnipotence, sorry, they say God has all powerful that is logically possible, that type of thing, in order to, in order to avoid the contradictions. Um, my thing is that um, I, I can't tell you how probable or improbable such a God is. I am not convinced that, uh, that there's any reason to think such a God is probable. And if you take the additional claims that people make about this God, for example, with intercessory, I'm going to put you on hold because we're getting like some kind of wind, wind or something, but yeah. you can still hear it. When you take the claims that people make about this particular God, things like intercessory prayer, or God has a plan, or God wants this for you, or for example, Ray Comfort, who, can, who says he can demonstrate God exists to anybody in 30 seconds, because if you just kneel down and sincerely ask God to reveal himself to you, he will. Well, there are people who have done that, including myself, and I didn't get any revelation. And the response is, well, you weren't sincere enough. Well, okay. Uh, there are so many things, so many claims about the Christian God that are absurdly, that, that, that are so absurd that they make it improbable. You have competing goals. You have a, a proposed goal that God has of, I don't know, maybe, maybe the universe exists as some kind of soul filter to, to distinguish the good souls from the bad souls. But that carries with it implications about whether or not you're good and, and evil. And yet the Christian idea of God doesn't care about that at all. All it cares about, the foundational principle of, of this uh, substitutional atonement, 
is do you believe, including deathbed conversions, and then you get to go to heaven? The absurdity that some guy who rapes and kills a little girl who's not saved, that this girl could go to hell. And by the way, I'm not saying that every Christian believes in hell or the same type of hell. But the absurdity that this, this little girl could go to hell because she was unsaved by particular theology, and this guy could then become saved and be, be, uh, go to heaven, um, that is not a system that uh, I would assess as perfectly just, and I don't think anybody else would either. As a matter of fact, I'd say it's perfectly absurd. So when you talk about the different claims that people make about it, some of them seem to be in conflict. And since we can't get any resolution on, uh, I mean, you know, like Tracy asked, well, what do you mean, which God are you talking about? You said the Judeo-Christian God and listed some right. qualities. But, you know, I mean, there's a thousand denominations of Christian. Right. Uh, you know, yes, you could probably define a God that's probable, um, it's just that most of those turn out to be useless. Like, um, you know, my God is this coffee cup or something like that. You're, you're, you're back, John. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, can you still hear me? Or? Yeah, we can yes. hear you. Okay. It just sounded weird for a second. Um, my question about that, when, when you mentioned, I can understand the emotional um, objection to, like, a, a murderer or whatnot. Um, all of a sudden, because of their faith, they are, you know, they're right with God just because of their faith. But what I think you're implying is that there, God is judging, you're presupposing there's some kind of standard. Now, I'm not getting into objective morality, but I'm saying that why would God allow the murderer or the rapist to enter heaven? He's using a standard to judge them by. The problem is, is if, if God is using a standard to judge the rapist and the murderer, that means there's a standard, and we can't, we can't define where it begins and ends. So even... Joe Blow, the neighbor who's never committed a crime, how do we know the standard ends at rape and murder? How do we know it doesn't go further than that? Because the whole, uh, the whole, what the Bible says is that we all sin. We all have, uh, we all have secret thoughts and, and uh, you know, things that go on on the inside, and you know that as well as I do. I mean, right. I know you're an atheist, that, but I know you have a conscience. That, you know right, when it's not a, it's not a, it's not a matter you know of... You do something against your wife. The problem is, is with that kind of... Uh, you're limiting God on what he can judge. You're saying God should only judge a rapist or a murderer, but, you know, Joe Blow, the neighbor who's always gone to work and takes care of his family, should enter heaven. Well, the problem what is that... God, what the Bible says... Well, let me finish real quick. Go ahead, go ahead. What the Bible says is that there is a standard. The standard doesn't begin and end where we choose. The standard goes beyond that. I it's saying that none of us achieve it. So we can't sit there and reject the Bible. I mean... Yes, we can. the claim you mentioned... Yes, we because can. Because God... It doesn't make sense because God would let a murderer. No, or no, John. Oh, no. Let me finish real quick. I'm sorry. Real quick. No, 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 no. You don't get to finish preaching if I'm sitting here objecting to what you're saying. I, I can barely hear you. That's why. I'm sorry for that. that that's fine. But I, you understand what I'm saying. I, we're, we got. For crying out loud. Oh, um, there we go. I was talking about um, that there are different standards that different Christian groups have claimed. I understand the. The position that you're talking about, um, it was one that I used to uh, accept as well. What I'm saying is that you are fundamentally wrong. We can assess that standard and determine whether or not it is just and moral. The fact that some old book asserts that there is some higher authority, even if it's true, even if the, Bi if the Bible is true and there is a God and he's judging people by some standard, I find it morally repugnant and reprehensible, and I want nothing to do with him. Anybody who would advocate that person X deserves to be tortured forever in hell or annihilated simply because they could not believe something for which there was insufficient evidence, while some other credulous numbskull can go out and kill and murder and rape and have a deathbed that is not justice. It is not. And I am, yes, I am imposing my own moral standards on it. But you know what? I'm more moral than the God of the Bible. I'm more moral than any character in the Bible. And so are you. And I wish people like you would own up to that and realize it. Instead of saying, oh, there's some standard that we don't understand. Oh, for crying out loud. Is there any possible way you could conceive of a standard that would punish this person and not punish this person when everything about you tells you that this person is a sick, evil predator and this person is an innocent, good-hearted individual. Can you even remotely conceive of that and why would you care that somebody else can? 
I got you. I, I understand. I feel the force of your objection. What I'm saying is if God can judge a rapist or a murderer, what makes you think he can't judge us? Let me, I'm trying to clarify what I mean here. Um, the thing is, even Joe Blow, the neighbor, you and I, we know we do wrong. I'm saying if God, if God is going to judge us to the letter of the law, I mean, we, we all have a conscience. You know when you do wrong. I know when I do wrong. That means we're still breaking some kind of moral code. I'm not talking about where it comes from. I understand. I, I'm just saying we still break it. Now, the only way, technically, if you go to what the Bible says, the only way we would pass God's criteria is, I mean, our conscience would never tell us we've done wrong. We'd be totally sinless. Yes. But I'm saying God has every right to judge the murderer, and I'm not going to limit him at that. He's got every right to judge Joe Blow, the neighbor who has... Why does you know, God have this right? Because he's God. I mean, if he's going to judge the rapist yeah. and the murderer, so, are you gonna tell, how are you going to tell him that he can't judge me or you? How, how, is, why not? how does that make him any different from a mafia boss? What do you mean? Well, you, you have, I mean, if I'm the mafia boss and I come and say, you're going to pay this much vig or I'm going to break your legs, guess what? You pay that vig and I get to judge you because I'm the boss. If you had kids, would you ever build a torture chamber in your basement and torture them endlessly if they didn't love you? Do you yeah, think? I, I, do you, I, I, don't, I don't want to get to the subject of hell. I, I agree. I do, oh, of I course do. you don't, no, no, because listen, it shows listen. the weakness of what you're saying. No, you're no, saying no, no. that God get, God brought you into this world. He can take you out. God is the ultimate boss, and He can do with you what you want. And I say that with that kind of with that kind of power comes responsibility, and it's patently absurd to to go ahead and grant to some deity whether he exists or not that he has the right to treat the person who lied and the person who raped equally, as if they've committed equal wrongs. It's absurd, and you fundamentally know it. 